welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I am your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger, and today we're talking about how to parent Leo Moon. Whether you are the parent of a Leo Moon child or you are a Leo Moon yourself seeking to reparent yourself from negative childhood conditioning, this video is for you. This video is also responding to a request from one of the audience members and if you have made a request in the comments or through email, I am getting to your video request in the order in which I received them. For now, please like this video, subscribe to my channel for your free, regular, positive parenting with astrology content. Okay, Leo Moon. This is a very different energy from Leo Sun. If you missed my video on Leo Sun, please go check that out. That's going to be informative regarding Leo Moon as well. Now, first of all, Leo is a fire sign and a fixed sign. So it's fixed fire. It is ruled by the sun, just like the sun is a fixed uh, fire element in our existence. That's how you think of Leo energy. Leo sun people like to be the center of attention. Think of the sun at the center of our universe. That's normal. That's the energy. They like to take center stage in life. In many ways, Leo is a personification of the masculine doing energy. It is it has a vitality, a life force to it. And the purest expression of Leo energy is that it illuminates and give, gives life to everything around it. And it is also fixed energy, remember? So it has a certain stability to it that the other fire signs don't necessarily have. But Leo energy definitely likes to be noticed. So what about Leo moon specifically when the chart holder's moon sign is in the sign of Leo? Now remember, the moon rules our emotional world, our emotional life. It informs how we show up in one-to-one -one relationships. It informs how we deal with anything subconsciously affecting, touching our emotions. It informs how we recharge our batteries, how we express emotions, how we deal with emotions, all that stuff. It is a more passive uh, body. The moon represents a more passive energy, right? It's the feeling, intuiting energy, whereas the sun represents the masculine doing energy, doing, accomplishing, uh, active, active energy. It's an action-oriented energy. When the moon is in Leo, the chart holder is typically very physically affectionate. Fire energy in general is a very touchy, tactile energy. Physical touch is often one of, if not the main love language of the chart holder when they have a lot of fire energy in their chart, especially like sun or moon being in, in a fire sign. So Leo moon is definitely like that. Leo moon energy uh, likes to be physically affectionate. Leo moon children are typically very physically affectionate even as they get older and Leo moon adults as well. Leo moon reacts very warmly and generously. It is a, it's a fire, fire sign, right? It's a very warm life giving energy. So this is definitely the case in one-to-one -one relationships. Leo moon energy also compels the chart holder to wear their emotions on their sleeves. It's a very demonstrative energy. If you have a Leo moon child or are in a relationship with a Leo moon adult, you will know what they're feeling, what they're going through emotionally. It's very hard for them to hide it from you. You'll know, right? When they're happy, you'll know. When they're joyful, you'll know. When you'll know. When they're depressed, upset, you will know. And as the parent of a Leo moon child, that's a good thing, right? You want to know what's going on with the kids. I, I talk to parents all the time that tell me, man, my kid, they're very stoic. They don't always talk about their emotions. When I ask them how everything is going, it's always fine. I'm good. They, you know, it, he, they're hard to read, right? That's challenging for the parent to get to the bottom of what the kids are experiencing, right? So that a parent can provide guidance and help. But with Leo Moon, parents typically don't have that problem too much or too much of the time because Leo Moon is so emotionally demonstrative. Leo Moon people can also be emotionally dramatic. Uh, so that's just something you need to know about the sign, about the energy. That is okay. They can be attention seeking because they, that's just the nature of Leo Moon. <laughs> they can be attention seeking. They like to be the center of attention. That's Leo energy, fixed fire. That's normal for the sign. It also gives, Leo energy gives the chart holder almost a childlike quality, right? Even into adulthood. So remember that. It is also an unendingly loyal energy. Definitely a good thing. 
Okay, so on to the more specific kind of parenting related tips for Leo Moon. As we said, Leo Moon children need to give and receive physical affection. If you're a parent that does not, you know, that does who that does not come easily for, who doesn't find that as natural, that physical affection, and it's possible that you had things happen to you as a kid that made you not want to be physically affectionate with those close to you. I understand that, right? It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It's just something you need to keep in mind because you want to make sure you're not communicating to your Leo Moon child that you're rejecting them. You want to make sure they don't feel rejected because you're not as touchy-feely as they are. You have to meet the kids where they are emotionally. So if they have that need, you're going to have to find ways of giving them the need, you know, respond to that need for physical touch and physical affection. And it's okay to have your, you know, your boundaries, express your boundaries, and it's okay to take breaks. And it's okay to say, hey, I'm touched down, I need a break for a minute. But you're going to have to work on any triggers you have from childhood because kids, especially young kids, need physical affection. And if fire moon children need it more than the average kid. Leo moon children also need praise. They need it from the parents in order to be validated emotionally and in order to have emotional connection with the parents. They love to receive praise. Now, this is where the role of the parent becomes even more significant because how you praise the Leo moon child is very important, right? If you're praising fixed qualities like looks or intelligence, you know, that may not have the same desired effect as praising things like effort, hard work. You don't ever want to suggest to your Leo Moon child that they should do things in order to get things, right? They should do things because it's the right thing to do. They should do things in order to feel personally fulfilled, right? In order to feel good about themselves at the end of the day, but not to get stuff in return. Leo, people with a lot of Leo energy in their chart love to give and receive gifts. But a lot of the times, if this is not handled appropriately by parents, they they give gifts um, with the end goal of getting stuff. Even if it's a thank you, like if you're getting giving somebody a gift in order to receive a thank you, that's still conditional, okay? You want to teach your Leo Moon children to do the right thing because it's the right thing. Or to do something to better themselves. Or to do something... Um, because it's personally fulfilling for them not to get something in return, including to get praise. Because you don't want to set them up for thinking as adults that relationships are pr quid pro quo, that relationships are conditional, that in romantic relationships, personal relationships, you have to do stuff to get attention and affection. You want to be very careful about sending that message. Now I'm going to share with you some insight on Leo Moon from relationship astrologer Stephen Arroyo. This is from one of his books, which I'll mention um, and highlight below in the video description. But when I talk to Leo Moon people and parents of Leo Moon kids, and in my studies, I've come to the conclusion that what Stephen Arroyo says on this subject has a lot of validity. So Leo Moon energy is more passive than Leo Sun energy. And that makes sense because the Sun is represents our life force. It's the personification of the masculine doing energy in our chart. The moon is more passive. It represents that feeling, emoting, intuition, right? It's just a more passive energy. So Leo moon tends to be more passive. Leo sun people are always busy doing things. My mother is like that. She's a Leo sun. She's in her seventies and she's always busy doing stuff. It shows no signs of slowing down. That's awesome. Leo moon is less like that. It's just a more passive energy unless the sun is also in a fire sign. So Stephen Arroyo says, and I find that this is largely true, that with Leo moon energy, there's almost like this sense that this person has great potential that is untapped. Great potential that is not fully realized. This may be creative or artistic potential. In our my video on Leo's son, I go over this in great detail, how Leo sun people are naturally artistic and creative. Every Leo Sun individual I know is a very talented visual artist. They have a lot of creative abilities that they use to express. So Stephen Arroyo says that Leo Moon people sometimes they don't, they do not always see the potential they have. They don't always see the talents and acknowledge the inherent talents, including creative talents that they have. 
And that makes sense because it is a more passive energy when the moon is in Leo as opposed to the sun being in Leo. And often other people can see that potential and see those talents and those abilities, but the Leo moon person cannot see it or has more trouble seeing it in themselves. And that makes sense from the standpoint of fire energy because I'm always saying that fire energy people have a more difficult time detaching from themselves to give themselves this like 360 degree view, right? Stepping outside of themselves. So that's consistent with fire energy in general. The Leo moon person having these, this great potential and having these innate talents and abilities, but not recognizing them themselves, but other people can recognize them. So to that end, I highly recommend that you encourage your Leo moon child to have as varied activities, as, as many varied activities as possible, including artistic stuff, including physical activity, to see what they like to do and where their talents and abilities lie, right? But that's the key is to give them this breadth of experience and let them experiment, especially creatively and artistically. You don't have to push them to do things, but you can um, introduce them to things and tell them we're gonna try this activity for one, two, three, you know, sessions. And if you don't really don't like it and don't want to continue, you don't have to, right? But the idea is to introduce them to these things, to see what they like to do, and to see the activities that they find personally fulfilling. Now, Leo Moon people need attention and adoration. That's all great to give your kids attention. You want to make sure you're giving your Leo Moon attention. You want to make sure you're giving your Leo Moon child the right kind of attention. That you're praising the process more than you're praising fixed qualities. You can tell them, I can tell you worked very hard on that. I'm very proud of your effort. I love the fact that you were so kind to your friend. I love the fact that you are a very empathetic individual. I love the fact that you're generous. It's great that you're kind to your friends. I can tell you thought very carefully about how to accomplish this. I'm very proud of the effort you made in this drawing, as opposed to, wow, you're a talented artist, which is okay to say, but you also wanna be sure you're praising the process. You have a lot of innate talent and I can tell that you worked really hard on this particular uh, painting or picture, right? Or short story. And when we talk about adolescents and teens, they want praise and adoration from the parents, but they don't necessarily articulate that. They want it, but they don't articulate that. It's a very tricky uh, time in the life of a child and in the parent-child relationship because the adolescent and teen wants the connection with the parents they want praise and validation from the parents, but they act like they don't need it. But I promise you, they still need it. So you still need to be praising them. You still need to be telling them you're proud of them. You still need to be recognizing them and validating their experiences and their efforts. I promise you, they want it and they need it. Now, we've talked a lot on this channel about fire energy and the challenge that fire energy people have to detach and see things from the other person's Point of view and this is the case for leo moon okay it is not a detached energy and when the moon is in the sign of leo it may be more difficult for the chart holder to see the other persons and understand the other person's emotional experience okay so you want to encourage your leo moon child to see things from the other person's point of view to think about things uh you know as if they were the other person you want to be sure you're teaching them empathy and one of the best ways to do that is to have empathy for your child and to express it. Leo moon energy is an Leo energy is an extroverted energy. Leo moon too. Leo moon people tend to be very social and tend to have a lot of friends. Leo moon also tends to be emotionally dramatic. So just know that about the sign. It's a normal part of that energy. Teach your Leo moon child how to handle their emotions in a healthy way. It's fine to express their emotions. But it's a fixed, it's fixed energy, remember? So there is a tendency to kind of wallow in the emotions a little bit. So you want to make sure that they're moving on from emotions, that they're acknowledging them, but they're moving on, which it's a fire sign. So that's, they're certainly able to do that. But don't, you know, don't make them feel bad uh, or somehow communicate to them that they should not be expressing their emotions, right? They're going to be dramatic. And one of your jobs as a parent is to teach them how to handle the intensity of their emotions. Um, and as we said on our video on Leo's son, Leo moon people as well also tend to take things 
personally, especially anything regarding uh, their emotions and their emotional experience. So make sure you're teaching your Leo moon child that not everything is about them, right? That, um, you know, consider things from the other person's point of view and not everything is a perceived rejection, right? It's an energy that tends to perceive rejection even when they're not being rejected, right? Again, take things personally, this penchant for taking things personally. So, so when things happen that they don't like or their friends, you know, don't want to spend time with them, it may not be because they're rejecting the Leo moon child. There may be other things involved. This may be happening for other reasons. So it's important for you to talk, you know, through that with your Leo moon child so that they know that the world is a complex place, that things may happen for a bunch of reasons, that not every, that, that not everything that happens to them that's bad is necessarily a rejection of them and their emotional experiences or a rejection of them as a person. It's very important to teach children, right? Because kids at that age, you know, adolescents and teens are naturally kind of self-centered. That's just part of the normal childhood development at that stage. So it's very normal for an adolescent or teen who has a Leo moon to take everything personally. Everything's about them. Well, they don't, this happened because they don't like me or they said no to coming to my house or my party because they don't like me or they're avoiding me. Not necessarily, right? So it's important for you to work through all that with your Leo moon child, right? So they're not feeling like they're being rejected. So they're kind of, their world is opened up and they understand that there's, there are a lot of different reasons that may explain events. Okay, so that is what I wanted to talk about today. I hope you found that video helpful and you can go back and review my video on Leo Sun. And uh, if you have any requests for videos for Zodiac combinations you'd like to see, please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.